Okay, so let's uh, do the last uh, consequence here of um, uh, the Archimedean property. This is called the density of the rational, density of the rationals in R. The density of Q, the density of the rational numbers in R. So uh, here's the statement, let x and y be rational numbers. Um, if uh, one is, so where one is less than the other, so if one is less than the other, then there exists some rational number such that p is trapped between uh, x and y. So given any pair of you know, different real numbers, there's always a rational number between them. Okay. And the proof of this will rely on the Archimedean property as follows. You say, okay, well, um, x being less than y means that y minus x is positive. Um, by the Archimedean principle, by Archimedean principle, there exists some natural number such that n times y minus x is bigger than 1. And we're going to use, we want, we want this to happen. Right? What, what we're going to use out of this is that ny is bigger than nx plus 1. Okay. Now again, also by the Archimedean principle, also uh, by the Archimedean principle, um, we have that there exist M1 and M2 natural numbers such that M1 is bigger than Nx. Um, and uh, M2 is less than, I'm sorry, M2 is bigger than negative Nx. Okay, it's the same thing, we, we take Nx and N1, right? Nx and 1, we know that some multiple of 1 is going to exceed Nx. Right, some multiple of one. This is secretly a one here. Okay, some multiple of one exceeds an x. Some multiple of one exceeds negative an x. Okay. Um, in other words, uh, an x is trapped between one and uh, negative m two. So now, um, <coughs> uh, so now um, there exists an m, an, an integer m. such that um, nx is trapped between m and uh, m minus 1. That step to then there is right, 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 right. So, so, um, so I think the way to do it is like this. So you say, well, look, um, uh, consider integers between. 
between uh, M between, let me, let me call them integers K. Consider all the integers K between these two guys. Okay, between negative M2 and negative 2 and M. Okay. And choose the smallest one, right? So, uh, I'm sorry, M1. Okay. So you know that M1 is bigger than, M1 is bigger than K. I'm sorry, M1 is bigger than, so notice that M1 is bigger than NX. Okay. So we start with that guy and we work our way downwards. Okay. There's only a finite number, there's only a finite number of these guys. Okay. So choose the smallest one. Choose the smallest K. Uh, such that k is bigger than nx, right? Because we know that um, <coughs> the top guy is the top guy is bigger than nx. So, and there's only a finite number of them. So just choose the smallest one, right? Um, right. There is definitely a smallest one because if we go down to m two we become smaller than nx. Okay. So choose the smallest k such that such that this happens. Right. We're not gonna get we're not gonna get all the way down to M2. Right. Yeah. That k that k uh, is is bigger than negative m2. Okay. But then k minus one must be um, uh, must be less than or equal to nx. Right. In other words, that k must be less than or equal to That's good. Okay. And so that's that K that guy is our M. Right. That K is our M. Right? Because K uh, we have this K and it's bigger than NX and NX is bigger than K minus one. Well, we we had to we had to use the Archimedean principle to get this down to a finite problem, right? We're trapped. There's a finite number of integers here, and we say, okay, now we can choose the smallest guy such that this happens. There's somebody, you know, some of these guys work, and we choose the smallest one that works. How come we didn't do negative m two is less than k, which is less than m one? I don't I really consider the case that could also possibly equal M2 and Say it again. Um, so in the IE, negative M2 is less than NX, less than M1. Mm -hmm. And then we went to negative M2 is less than or equal to K. This is M, not M2. Well, I guess my confusion is why we, why why is that k could also equal m2, but then nx has to be greater than m2? Why do we take the k's between these two numbers? Like that could also possibly equal those two numbers. Mm -hmm. But then right before that, uh, negative m2 is less than m2. Yeah, how come how come the inequality sign is kind of changed? Uh, because we want to have the possibility that k could be equal to m one, right? We want k to be k to be maybe equal to m one. What? Why? Why is that? Right, because 
maybe maybe that maybe that's the smallest number that works, right? Maybe that that turns out to be the smallest number, right? In, in which case, yeah, I don't want to exclude it, right? We're choosing the smallest k that for the, which this works. We know that there's one number that it works for, right? If I if I throw that guy out, then you know, then you could rightfully say, how do you know that there's any number that that for which this happens, right? But we know that there's some m in there. We know that there's some k that works, namely m1 works, okay? And we say, okay, we know there's one guy in there that works, choose the smallest guy that works, right? You need to ch consider the set of, of, consider the elements between here and here that, um, for which k is bigger than nx, okay? It's not empty. Right? It's not empty because M1 works. Okay. Now, it's a finite set because we're trapped between here and here. Choose the smallest guy in there. Okay. 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 So that, that gives us our, uh, that justifies this statement here. <laughs> right? There is an M for which this happens. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me sort of box that and go on. Um, OK, so then I, uh, so then what do we have? Um, we have m is bigger than nx, right? m is bigger than N nx. We also have m is less than, less than or equal to nx plus 1. Right, so m is less than or equal to nx plus 1. But nx plus 1 we had was less than ny. Was less than ny. OK. And then you see that um, uh, if we divide through, mn is greater than x, but we also have m over n is less than y. Right? And so we found the rational number that's trapped between x and y. Right? So m n is our p. Is the p we're looking for. Oh, yeah. Did you ever have to show that um, n is not zero? n was a natural number. Oh, thank you. Yeah, n was a natural number. So we're OK. <laughs> if n was zero, we'd have trouble here. I was hoping to get on to section five, the extended real number system, but I think uh, there's no time to start it. Right? We'd start it, but then we'd have to restart it again. So let's let's stop here. Um,